Are you ready to feast your eyes on some of the strangest foods in the world? We all know different cultures enjoy varied and sometimes bizarre dishes, but wait until you see the insanity of what we've found for you. We've traversed the globe to bring you today's crazy weird delicacies, from deep fried spiders in Cambodia to tuna eyeballs in Japan. One, two, three. And that's just a few of the strange foods on today's menu. There's plenty more where that came from. Grab a snack, or maybe rather don't. Get comfortable and sit tight as we whisk you on a whirlwind adventure around the world to serve you up with some of the craziest foods this planet has to offer. Like and subscribe right now, or you're gonna have bad luck for the next week. Don't risk it, let's start. Alligator. Alligator meat? Well, I never. Apparently, it's a healthy meat source for humans thanks to its high protein levels. Some say it tastes quite mild and is rather firm in texture. In the USA, it can be legally sourced from alligator farms, and you can even buy it in some grocery stores. You wouldn't want to mix that up with fish now, would you? Yikes. Some US companies process the tail of the alligator and market it that way, and it's even made into pet food. Now, that's strange, right? Imagine feeding your dog alligator meat. No, thank you. Sure, it has a hefty amount of nutrients, but it's still alligator. I don't think I could stomach it. Could you? Tarantula spiders in Cambodia. If you're afraid of spiders, look away, because up next is some fried tarantulas. Yep, back in the day in Cambodia, during the Khmer Empire, people didn't have much choice when food was scarce. But what's their excuse now? Apparently, they have no excuse. They actually enjoy it. Spider eating is quite the thing in Cambodia, both locally and in the tourist market. In the Cambodian town of Skun, fried spiders are the talk of the town. It's the must-try specialty of the area. I don't know about that, folks. These spiders are bred in holes in the ground near Skun, and some are forged in nearby forests. And then they're fried up with some sugar, salt, MSG, and crushed garlic. Some people who have been able to stomach say it tastes like a cross between a chicken and a codfish. Wait until you hear about the abdomen. Inside, there's a brown paste of organs, perhaps some eggs and excrement. Uh, yep, I've heard enough. Shirako in Japan. Guys, this has got to be the strangest dish in the world. Shirako, aka fish semen. Yep, I'm not joking. This white paste may look like mayonnaise, but do not be deceived. You've been warned. In Japan, they serve it on top of rice or fry it in a tempura batter. Word on the street is that it has a rich texture and a sea-like taste. Yeah, I'm sure it does. But I'll never be trying it. Sure, we eat fish eggs, so why not fish semen, right? It's often referred to as fish milt, and in Sicily, tuna milt is fairly common. And even in Romania, people love some fried milk from freshwater fish. There's even an octopus milk. Wow, are people that into fish semen? Seems like it. Don't even get me started on how they collect the milk. It's usually retrieved from a fish carcass. Delicious or strange, I'll let you decide. Grasshoppers in Thailand. Eating insects is definitely a bit weird, but in Phuket it, in Thailand, it's all the rage. Deep fried and dipped in soy sauce with a sprinkling of salt, grasshoppers are quite the dish there. Those crispy little critters are slightly bitter. Perhaps you can compare them to a packet of chips, except wait, you can't because they're grasshoppers. That's never gonna feel normal, is it? They are said to be delicious and totally safe to eat, but you must cook them first. You've been warned, no raw grasshoppers now. Some locals call them insect popcorn. Yep, imagine going to catch a movie with a box of fried grasshoppers. No sweet popcorn there, just fried insects. I'm not sold, are you? Balut. Balut. What's a balut, I hear you ask? To put it simply, it's a fertilized bird egg, usually a duck egg that's incubated for up to 21 days and then boiled or steamed. It's a typical street food delicacy in the Philippines and can even be bought in stores and malls. Oh, really? Yeah, I do like the end. People eat the contents directly from the eggshell, and the partially developed embryo is apparently soft enough to chew and swallow whole. The mallard duck is where the balut comes from. Wow, it's popular because it's a cheap source of protein and calcium. But still, I don't think I could ever try that, even if you paid me. It would just feel too wrong, but each to their own. If you're brave enough, why not pop over to the Philippines and get yourself some balut? Red ants. 
In Boiparaguda in India, red ants are the dish of the day. The people living there believe that both red ants and their eggs have medicinal properties and that a typical serving of them is equal to 14 grams of protein. One of the tribal healers in the village says that red ants can enhance your eyesight and prevent sunstroke. Well, in that case, hit me up with some red ants. That's gotta be cheaper than my new glasses. It's quite the challenge to get the ants from their hives in the trees. The male ants protect the hives and will even bite you, but fear not. Apparently the bites can cure skin disease and relieve joint pain. Wow, what can these red ants not cure? The ants are made into a soup while the eggs are fried. And voila, dinner is served. Wichetti Grub, Australia. In the outback in Australia, there's something called Wichetti Grub, which is a staple in the diets of the Aboriginal people. Brace yourself now, because wichetti grub is in fact the white larva of a moth. The moths eat the root of wichetti bush, so that's where the delicacy gets its name from. It's one of the most important insect foods out in the desert because it contains so much protein. Crikey, those are some brave people eating these grubs. It's said to taste like almonds, but I highly doubt that. The thought of one of those wriggling around in my mouth gives me the heebie-jeebies. But if it's a matter of survival, you can't go wrong with that dose of protein now, can you? Needs must and all that. Tuna eyeballs, Japan. Squelch, squelch, ever had a tuna eyeball? In Japan, you're more likely to catch a glimpse of an eyeball than a California roll if you venture through one of the fish markets or grocery stores. Hey, tuna! <laughs> Japanese chefs serve up tuna eyeballs as a bar snack or a little appetizer before your main. Braised lightly in some soy sauce or sauteed with ginger and sesame oil, people can't get enough. Chewy and gelatinous, with a rather bland taste is how they best describe it. I don't know about you, but the thought of walking into a bar, or an izakaya as they're known in Japan, and getting served up a plate of eyeballs, ugh, it makes my stomach feel queasy. Imagine looking down at your plate and being stared at by tuna eyeballs. There's even a drink called tuna tears, made from soju and eyeballs. I mean, have you ever? Yondegi. Beyondegi, aka silkworm pupa, is a classic dish in any market in South Korea. At first glance, you might be deceived because it looks like coffee beans, but don't let that fool you. Beyondegi is a very popular snack and has a fishy, nutty taste. On the outside, it's crunchy, but the inside is soft and gooey. You're either gonna love it or hate it. It's an acquired taste for sure, but with a bit of salt or sugar, it might become a bit more palatable. It became popular during wartime thanks to its protein value and how available it was. I guess some things just stick generations later, and it's still found all around the city. But a little bird tells me that it's more a fave among the older generations. Kids these days just don't have the guts to try these weird foods. I'm with the kids on that. Bird's Nest Soup. For this one, you better get saving, because bird's nest soup ain't cheap. For more than 400 years, this Chinese delicacy has been leaving a dent in people's wallets. The caviar of the East, as it's often called, is the nest of a swiftlet bird. and can cost anywhere from between $2,500 to $10,000 per kilogram. So basically for one bowl of soup, you better get ready to cough up around $100. The reason it's so expensive is because it's so dangerous to get the nests and also the process of cleaning them can take a long time. The people who collect these nests risk their lives in the process. They are way out in the wild, usually up in high mountaintop caves. So you can only imagine the mission these people have to go on to get one. They're made from a mixture of bird feathers and bird saliva. And for those brave enough who've tried it, it's said to taste soft and jelly-like. I think I'm good. This is just too strange. Frog's legs in Paris. This one I might be able to handle. Frog's legs are a specialty of France, along with snails, of course. A cross between chicken and fish with a rather interesting taste. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Take a bite. A chewy. Legend has it that it was back in the 12th century that some sneaky monks started eating frog's legs, claiming that they were fish so that they could eat them on top of their no-meat diet. After that, it just took off. The monks set a trend, and pretty soon everyone was munching on frog's legs. Even today, in the eastern part of France, frog's legs are still popular, and it's estimated that up to 160 million frog legs are consumed a year. That's a lot of frogs! Wow! But where do they come from? Well, most of them are caught in the dead of night in swamps in Indonesia. Of course, they were found more locally back in the day, but the authorities soon put a ban on frog hunting and farming in the 1980s. So now they're all imported. There's even a frog festival every April in the town of Vittel, where locals gather to eat tons of the stuff. Crazy. Southern Fried Rattlesnake. As if things couldn't get any more strange. Allow me to introduce you to Southern Fried Rattlesnake, 
breaded, fried, and served with cactus fries. Rattlesnake is on the menu down in the southwest of the USA. And don't ask me why, because apparently it's bland and hard to chew with lots of little bones. It doesn't sound like fun to me, and yet people still eat it. It's pretty much a cross between frog legs and turtle, being a white tender meat. And due to the rattlesnake's long backbone, it's full of tiny rib bones. Some even say it tastes like popcorn chicken, but I beg to differ. You won't catch me eating a fried snake anytime soon. That just takes strange to a whole other level, doesn't it? So what do you think? Are you brave enough to try any of these strange foods from today? I'm not gonna lie, I've definitely lost my appetite. Those dishes are just insane. If you had to try one, which one would you choose? I'd probably go for the frog legs because I'm too much of a chicken to try the rest. In fact, I think I'll just stick to chicken. Share the ones you dare to try with us in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more weird and wonderful videos. Until next time, bon appetit.